guys, here we are back for another pie for the October Pie Collaboration. Now I was uh, asked by Miss Tammy from Little Jordan Farm if I wanted to join in with her with this pie collaboration and have uh, a bunch of ladies join in for all these different recipes on pies. They can be old fashioned pies, they can be new pies, but just as long as they're pies. But we wanted to get some different recipes going into the holidays. So we thought the collaboration would be a good deal. So Miss Tammy asked me, and she asked Miss Vicki from Vicki's Country Home. And uh, both these ladies are very good bakers. So I said, I said, yes, I'm gonna do this. So we all went in together, uh, made a pie, then we all tagged uh, I tagged three different people. Miss Tammy tagged uh, three different channels, and Miss Vicky tagged some different channels. So I think we may end up with quite a few pie recipes. So if y'all want to see all the recent pie recipes and then the new ones coming up, the the playlist will always be down in my description box. So today we're going to be making one of my favorite old-fashioned pies. You know, when you go into the holidays, there's always that person, <laughs> that certain person that makes that certain pie. And you know exactly, you know, you're thinking, oh, grandma's chocolate pie, or mama's apple pie, or, you know, Aunt Julie's lemon meringue. There's always that one certain pie from that one certain person. So today, I'm going to make an old-fashioned lemon meringue pie. I love them. I don't make them very often. I don't know why, because I really do enjoy them. But this is an old-fashioned recipe. It's easy, and um, I think y'all are really going to like it. So stick around. Um, as long as you got lemons in the house, you can make a lemon meringue pie. So let's get started. Now, the first thing I want to show y'all is you need a pre-baked pie shell. And I've got one right here. And, uh, you know, as busy as the holidays are, a lot of times I'll buy a store-bought pie crust just to kind of make it easier on myself because I kind of get beside myself, you know, trying to get everything together sometimes. So I do like a lot of the store-bought pie crust. So you need one of those. And then... To start our filling, now this is a stainless steel pot and it's got a thick uh, bottom on it. Now I'm going to turn my stove on about medium low. And what I've got here in my bowl is I've got a third of a cup of, well, the recipe calls for cornstarch. I use arrowroot, so I'm gonna say a third of a cup of cornstarch and a third of a cup of cake flour. Now, if you don't have cake flour, that's fine. Just use a third of a cup of all-purpose flour. Then I've got a pinch of salt. Now, I know you're asking, why are you using a third of a cup of cake flour? Cake flour is a real starchy flour, so that's going to, that just thickens stuff a lot better. Anything, star, any flour that's starchy like that, like cake flour, is really going to hold up and thicken your, your sauces or fillings real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my arrowroot and my cake flour and my pinch of salt in my pan. And I'm gonna move my pan so I burn it. Then I've got, let's see, one and a half cups of sugar. And I've got two cups and make sure 
two cups of water. Make sure I had the right amount of water. I'm going to stick it back over here. And I'm going to start mixing this up good. Now your arrowroot, it usually mixes up really good. Cornstarch sometimes wants to lump up on you. Your cake flour has a lot more protein in it than just regular all-purpose flour. So I've got a third of a cup of cornstarch, a third of a cup of cake flour, a pinch of salt, and two cups of water in my pan. And I'm going to keep stirring it constantly. And I'm going to let it come to a slow boil. Once it comes to a slow boil, we'll be back and go to the next. ingredients. Now make sure you keep stirring this. Don't walk away from it because it will scorch. Now it's not coming up to a, a boil yet. We'll be back when it does. Okay, my <clears throat> mixture has come up to a medium boil and you don't want no more than that at this point. You can see around the edge how it's come to a little boil and it's already starting to thin it up. What I'm going to do is I've got five egg yolks in here, and I've got them mixed up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my mixture. Now, I've turned my heat off, and I'm going to take some of my mixture, and I'm going to put, I'm going to temper my eggs. So I'm going to put some in here, I'm going to stir it up, temper them a little bit, because you don't want to just pour them in your pie filling because you're liable to have scrambled eggs. Now you can pour as much as a whole cup in here and get it good and tempered before you, before you pull it back in there. I think I'll pour me one more little thing. Mix it up good. Now, I'm going to pour my egg mixture back into my pie filling. And I'm just going to whisk it up really good. So your, your filling should come out smooth with no lumps. And believe me, I have made fillings with lumps in it before, so, you know, sometimes that happens. Just as long as it tastes good. Okay. I got the eggs in there mixed in real good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn my stove back on. Turn it about medium low. And I'm going to let it come to another low boil. Then I'm going to let it boil for about three minutes. So just keep us stirring so we don't scald our filling. So we're getting there pretty quick. And it's going to be good. Okay, I had it come back to a low boil. And I'm just going to keep whisking and whisking and whisking. And it's going to get thicker and thicker. Now, I know you're all probably saying, where's the lemon? It was fixing to come in. Because after I cook this for three minutes, and we've got two minutes and three seconds left right now, we're going to put our zest in, and we're going to put our lemon juice. So I'm just going to keep stirring. Okay. It's done now. I've let it do a, a very low boil and thicken up for about three minutes. Now we're going to put our lemon juice. It's a fourth of a cup of lemon juice. Your lemon juice is where you're going to get your tartness at in your pie. So it's a fourth of a cup. Just whisk that up good. And then I've got the zest of two lemons. And this is where you're going to get your, your lemony taste from is the zest. 
So your juice is going to be your tart, and your lemon taste is going to be from your zest. And it smells really good. Okay, we've got our lemon juice and our rind in there, and I've got it mixed up really good. It's a real pretty pale lemon color. Now we're going to get it in our pie shell, and we're going to make our meringue for our pie. I've got six egg whites in here. I only use five egg yolks in my pie, but whenever I make a meringue pie, I like to use at least six egg whites. So, they're at room temperature. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to just get it good and frothy before I put my cream of tartar in there. Okay, now that I've got the froth up, I'm going to put about a fourth of a teaspoon of my cream of tartar, and I'm just going to eyeball it, and that's probably more than what I needed. That's okay. Now I'm going to turn it back on and uh, whisk this up to about soft peak before I put my sugar in. Okay, that's about soft peak, and I'm going to start pouring in my sugar now. Just a little bit at a time, now I've got about half a cup. I'm going to turn my mixer up now. Now I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of vanilla, and I'm going to mix this till it gets to a stiff peak, which won't be very much longer. Now the one thing you got to know when you're making meringue, you don't have to beat it to death. So I'm going to stop at this point. And that's a good meringue. So I'm going to get it off there. We're going to get it on our pie. Okay, we're at the ending touches here. And this is our meringue. And you always want to, the uh, way I was taught, is always do your meringue while your pie is still hot. So I'm going to pile it up here, then I'll smear it around a little bit. I tasted this filling, and it's really good. It doesn't have any artificial taste to it because we used real lemon juice and real lemon zest that don't have lemon flavoring or nothing like that in it. It's the real stuff. So what you want to do when you're spreading out your meringue is go all the way over the side of your crust because 
that meringue's gonna it's gonna shrink a little. So you want to go all the way over. I've not had a lemon pie in a while, so I'm looking forward to this. Okay. I'll use my finger and get the rest of this off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make little peaks. Just take the side of your... Or you can take a spoon or just whatever. Just, just makes it look prettier when it's good and brown. You take it out of the oven. It don't have to be perfect. In fact, I don't like perfect. So there we go. So we're going to stick it in the oven. I got my oven on 350 because my oven gets really hot and I'm gonna watch it usually it takes about 15 minutes and I'll check it at 15 minutes okay mr. Brown's here and he's gonna do the taste test he's fixing the leave gonna have to go work on a bus tonight so on go ahead Sunday night on Sunday night he ain't too happy but that's part of it <clears throat> take you a good big old bite of that lemon pie big one well you know it's still warm I know I don't like cutting them when they're still warm boy it's good it's a good and lemony good and lemony <laughs> creamy that's why I like it I don't like Creamy that. Creamy and lemony and the calf slobbers are good. I don't call it that. That's nasty. So, if y'all like this recipe, give me a thumbs up. Mark crust good. It's an all butter crust. Give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'm having a really good time with these this pie collaboration. I'm going to be doing one more pie recipe. And there are a bunch, there's a whole lot of women that's joined in on this collaboration. And they've got a lot of good recipes. And I've got all their links on my playlist. It's the October Pie Collaboration. So, Miss Vicki, I wish you was here to take a bite of this lemon pie. I know it's your favorite. Tell Miss Vicki how good it is. <laughs> Miss Vicki, it's delicious. <laughs> it's even, it's still warm, too. Oh, it's good. Okay, guys. Old-fashioned lemon meringue pie. That pie was pretty good. Hey, I've got to tag three people. And I've been thinking, you know, there's so many people I'd love to tag. Because there's so much that a lot of people have to offer for this pie collaboration. And my glasses got the TV in it. So we'll just take it off. I can't see nothing. <laughs> but I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something a little different. We've got all women. So I thought I'd tag some men in on this pie collaboration because I know they can cook. So I want to see what they bring to the Thanksgiving table. So my first tag is going to be uh, Rob from Ession's Family Garden. I, I really love this family. Him and his family do so much. They have got... They garden, and they bring, uh, they show us so many great recipes, um, and they're just, they're just good, wholesome family, and, uh, a lot of us just love them. So, Rob, I'm tagging you. Now, <laughs> I'm probably going to get in trouble, but I'm going to tag Dan from Home in the Sticks. Now, I know he's a busy man. But I think he can bake us at least one pie. So, I'm tagging you, Dan. Don't let us down. And I'm also going to tag Rick from Gnome Town. So, those three men have got to bring us some pies. So, let's see how they do. I hope you all enjoyed this video. The pie, it, it's a really good, this is my favorite lemon meringue recipe it just it puts out a good pie every time so i'm gonna tell you guys good night it's getting dark it's getting light and it's bedtime so god bless everybody 
And uh, I'll see you sometime by maybe the end of the week. See what's going on. So I love you guys. We'll see you later.